I was doing the late show and I'd only been in here about 10 minutes and a copper burst in the dressing room and I of course thought he was the stripper, you know, the male stripper addressed as a copper and they were so rude and so aggressive and when I came out on the stage there behind me they were all wearing, the place was heaving and they were all wearing rubber gloves and of course I said oh good if you come to do the washing up and there was pandemonium, people were scared Tables and chairs were going over. The police were extremely aggressive. I went upstairs to Breed and the landlady to tell her. And next thing, there's a load of coppers in her front room dragging her out, leaving the children behind. And God knows to this day why they raided it. And the only thing I can put it down to was we had a chief of police at the time who was homophobic. And of course, it was the height of the AIDS pandemic. So this was a perfect excuse for them all to come in and cause trouble and there was no need for it. And funny enough, that week I went up to Manchester and worked in another club and there was another raid in the same week. So it seemed to be the fashion at the time of these born again Christian chief of police who wanted to, as they called us, you know, the, the sleazy underworld of homosexuals. Does it look sleazy? <laughs> and I was called a lascivious act in the South London press which, to tell you the truth, I was delighted about, and I used that quote when I did the Edinburgh Festival. But police have apologised all around the world for the behaviour those years ago, and I think it's about time that the British police did the same thing, came down here and said, we're so sorry for what happened, because it was unnecessary, and it was just a homophobic act, and that was it, and I refused to believe anything else. 